So today's agenda will be covering uh, HTML and CSS, a bit of the command line, a bit of something called version control. So hopefully um, by the end of it, you may not understand everything. That's, that's, that's fine. That's no problem. We just want you to at least know of these things and understand it a little bit. That's a good start. Better than nothing, right? So we're going to start with what, what, what is web development? Why is it? Why is it? Like, because this is one of those things I feel that, like, the tech industry tends to mystify, then they throw a lot of jargon, and nobody understands. But actually, web development is very easy. It's the process of building websites. Now, there are many ways you can build websites, but the web development is just the process, right? And how do you get started doing web development? You need a computer, which all of you already have. So that's 50%. And the other 50% you also have. You need a brain. OK, the image is a bit cut off. Um, Basically, that's all. All these other things that we're asking you to install are merely tools or things that are like utilities that will help you. But if we boil it down to the, the most basic, right? You need a computer because almost every computer will have a text editor. And the text editor is essentially what you need. Because at the end of the day, right? Code is just numbers, letters, and symbols. So if you have something that can Create these numbers, letters, and symbols on your computer. Set. Right? So today, the text editor that we've been forcing all of you to install is this program called Visual Studio Code. And I will explain why we kind of like making all of you install this extra program where actually your computer already has a text editor. It's just that it's very vanilla. It's black text on white background. Or sometimes if you customize it, then it's, but it's like two colors, right? Uh, one of the things that even the most experienced programmers and developers will, will face is something we like to call typo. Uh, so you are, computers are not very smart. Computers ex understand exact instructions. For example, I think this is relevant to this, this uh, market, Singapore, because we, we, what, what, what do we learn? We learn something called British English. Right? And British English spells things, words like color with a U. Unfortunately, a lot of this code right, came from America. So they spell color, no you. So these sort of things, right? a text editor like Visual Studio Code, they, they do something called syntax highlighting, means like specific phrases and words relevant to the code, different color. So it's sort of a visual indicator. It's a hint that hey, maybe you type this wrongly. So if you don't want to use VS Code, can but I hope you have a very good eye for spotting your own typos. Just saying. So, HTML and CSS are the foundation of the web. And I will go into this in a, more, a lot more detail. But essentially, these two things, if you know these two things, it's enough to create your first website. That's all you need to know. So, I'm calling this a technology stack. I ap apologize for throwing terms at you, but I, we call it a stack. Because it literally looks like a stack. You start off with HTML, which is for structuring and presenting your content. So you can have, like, can you, can you imagine a block of text? No formatting, just a block of text, but it's long. It's very hard to read if everything is the same size, same space, it's just a block of text. Can read, but very hard. So what HTML does is that it offers us a way to format the text. Like, you can make things into headers. You can split your text into paragraphs and a lot, amongst other things, to allow you to structure your content in a way that your, you, your readers or your users can consume your content better. So that's why it's the foundation, because it's the structure of your content. Then on top, after you structure your content, then maybe you want to make your web page look a bit more interesting. You want to like add color, shadow, borders, whatever, right? All these styles come in CSS for formatting the look of your page, your content, your site. The last one is JavaScript, not covered today, will be covered in probably workshop, workshop two and three, taught by uh, Jun Qi at the back. So because this is, JavaScript is a, is a full, full programming language. So uh, not, not enough scope to cover it today. But it can do things like, for example, um, simple example, sometimes when you go to certain websites, and then when you log in, then there's this animation, and then you're like, oh, spin around, and then disappear. That kind of thing, we'll, we can achieve it using uh, JavaScript. It's for 
dynamic and interactive capabilities, right? So this, this is, is basic. Sometimes you will access uh, sites or services, for example, like Facebook. Uh, I don't like Facebook, but, oh shit, it's recorded. Um, but um, <laughs> services like Facebook offer something called user login, right? When you log in, somehow Facebook knows a lot about you. A lot of this data is you own self provide Facebook one, uh, so don't go around complaining. But all this data that you have provided Facebook is stored somewhere so they can re retrieve it and show it back to you, right? So all this data is not stored on your, your own computer. It's stored on Facebook's database. So Facebook, as a, if you think of Facebook as a site, right? Facebook needs to connect to a database to retrieve all, all the data about you to show it back to you. But I mean, if your website is something a bit simpler, like maybe it's your personal website, you don't really need people to log in to your personal website, and then you don't need a database, it's fine. Your website can still exist on the web. That's why this is added on, like it's a stack, stack on top, stack on top. So like without this, without HTML, no website. So that one, that's why that one is the base. That's why we call it a stack. So today I explained we are going to be using Visual Studio Code as a code editor. Um, does everybody have a GitHub account? If you don't have, uh, please sign up for one. Uh. Um, there's another service called Code Anywhere. We may or may, or may not be using this, uh, depending on how today goes. Um, Code Anywhere is, I call it an online development environment, uh, because you can do all this so-called web development on your local machine. But as you all have all experienced just now, right? some of you using Windows, some of you using Mac, I don't know if anybody is using Linux, but if you're using Linux, like, good for you. I'm very, like, respect. Um, so all these different environments, uh, the way to set it up is quite different. And when we use an online development environment, it ensures that all of you, like, have the same, uh, same setup. So it's for convenience sake. So may or may not touch on this, Heroku's not, not, not covered today. So the first question now is, do you all think there's a difference between internet and World Wide Web? This is the same thing. I ask this question every time nobody answers, so I read Zaita, you answer one. Um, it's different. Internet is physical. The internet is the entire network of networks that connect all the world's devices to each other. It means all your devices, we're all connected to TW Gas today. And TW Gas is connected to the wider internet. So the internet is actually physical in the sense that it's made out of underwater cables. These are the biggest uh, thing of it as the, the base covering a, the world, right? This, this is a real photo, real scuba diver doing maintenance on undersea cable. And then we have these data, uh, this exchange. This is where, I don't know if you're, maybe the young, young generation and uh, never seen this sort of thing before, but if you watch like the older movies and then you call, like you try to call anybody, then usually there will almost always be a lady and then like, hello operator, and then the lady will be like, oh, who, uh, like, can you please connect me to Mr. Robertson? Then he will like, oh, okay, Mr. Robertson, then click. It's a similar concept in that that's how, how the world's internet exchange are connected to each other in this, just that, that's the same as that operator that I just described, just scaled up much bigger like data exchange, right? And then of course we have our telcos. So you have your um, copper cable, fiberglass cable, all that, telcos. Telcos are in charge of the internet, ma. like we have Singtel, Starhub, some circles, live maybe. And then this will be more familiar. These are the ones that come to us as individuals already in our house, office, these Ethernet cables. And of course today we're also using Wi-Fi, so personal. So this, this whole, all these physical things, this is what connects your computer to Facebook servers in maybe America, maybe some, you have a friend in Argentina, I can send email to them, all connected to the same network. This planet so big, same network, one network. That's the internet. So this is a picture of the global submarine map. So I don't know if any of you remember what happened a few years ago, there was this big earthquake somewhere around our region, I think somewhere here, and then one of the major cables was affected. But we could all still connect to the internet, just very slow. And that's, that's, that's what's interesting about the internet. It's very resilient. All this data, as you can see, I, download this, I downloaded this information off the web. So you can, with enough research and curiosity and free time, you can actually find where these cables are. 
They're like lying on the beach. And if you were feeling particularly malicious, you can take an axe, very angry, like angry at your boss, angry at your whoever, and then you go and hack the cable. But if you hack a cable, right, unless you have coordinated with a global group of angry friends, try to hack all the cable at the same time, right, you cannot break the internet. You can't. It's, it's built to be, you, you, you reroute. It'll just be slow, like this, the people, like maybe this part, like, oh, why, why, why the internet is so slow today? Because you hacked the cable, but they can still access the internet. Because the, the internet was built to be resilient in this way. Again, all these exchanges, this is publicly known information. Singapore has a number of these exchanges. The buildings are unmarked for security reasons. You don't want to like advertise, hey, this is where the internet is. Like, no, like, they just like keep you on the down low. It's a nondescript building. But it's, it's, it's public, public information, sort of. So again, bomb one, internet might be affected, but it won't go away, right? Started in 1958, internet. Because long, long ago, before computers were this size, they were this size, a room size. People work in computers. When I say, oh, I work in computers, right? In the 50s, you literally work in computers because very big. And these computers, right, not like now where, let's say you are on a Mac and then you want to send a message or, or you want to send anything to a Windows machine, right? You can, like, there, there, there are ways for your computers to communicate with each other. You don't think twice about it. Long ago, every computer ran a different system, so to speak. So if you wanted to install a program on one computer, you couldn't install on another computer. The, the people who were running the other computer had to sort of like memorize, oh, this, this, this program looks very interesting. It can do function A, B, C. Go back to their own computer and then program it from scratch because there was no way for computers to talk to each other. So a bunch of smart people was like, this is a waste of resources. Why, why am I duplicating work? So they had to actually invent the methods for co computers to communicate with each other, networking. So, so this started in 1958. And that's eventually how, what, what became the internet today. World Wide Web, which is WWW, was invented in 89. Still older than you, but younger than most of you. Right? Uh, and it was invented by this one, one man because he was the one who created these three technologies that formed the basis of the World Wide Web. So, protocol for, which is HTTP, which is what you type in front of your URLs every time. So nowadays, you, we, nobody types the HTTP. Browsers do it for you automatically. But this is the protocol that allows your browsers to retrieve information. A protocol is just a set of uh, guidelines that all devices agree upon. This is how we communicate with each other. This is why, the, this is why all your phones your computers, all different, running different systems. But when you access the internet, it can work. Because everybody has agreed that the way that we trans transmit information between these devices standardized protocol. HTTP, that is one of the protocols. There are a lot of other protocols in, in, in the tech industry, but this is the most common one, I believe. URI, which is commonly, we hear it as URL, Unif Uniform Resource Link. URL basically just links, right? Links. So unique is real. It's really unique because every link, you, you cannot have, you cannot access two different types of resource from the same link. It just doesn't happen. Like a good example is if you try to save files on your computer, if you call it, say, dinosaur, right? You cannot have the same file name dinosaur. Your computer will ultimately give you this message like, you already have a file named dinosaur. Would you like to name it dinosaur bracket one? Right? That's because <coughs> That's, the, that, that's how computers keep track of every single file on your devices. Unique file name. And because of this, when this went expanded onto like the global network, right, every single resource that can be accessed over the web is unique. That's how, it's, that's how we know that when I want to access, say, my Facebook profile, I'm accessing my photos and my stuff and not yours. Because the, photo, the link to my photo is unique and, and when I log into my own account, right, my username, that, that is all unique. So it, it ensures that I'm retrieving the same unique resource every time. It will not overlap with anybody else. That's why when you log in, when you try to create new accounts, 
you cannot have the same user account name as someone else, for example. It is un the underlying principle is, is akin to this. And HTML is what we're going to be learning today, which is a markup language for structuring your content. So uh, this guy's name is Tim Berners-Lee, invented all three of these things. If you like books, all these available at Singapore National Library Board. I actually, as a Malaysian, I think Singapore has one of the best library systems in the world. I'm very jealous. Uh, but yes, if you are interested, all these available, Singapore National Library Board. So how the web works, we can sort of skip this because we can start off with doing something because I've been talking for a long time. So has everybody downloaded the files from this, uh, the second instruction? There should be a, okay, I think I can show you how, if you haven't downloaded it yet, right? If you already downloaded it, great. But if you haven't, when you're at this page, right, and you click this green button, you can download zip. So if you haven't downloaded it, just click download zip, then you should save somewhere into your computer. I will click it too. Download to Nali. Should I reduce the resolution? It's very small. I cannot zoom sublime, right? No, I can zoom the text, but I cannot zoom the side part, right? I don't like this. But, what is that? Okay. You probably need to zoom the UI also. Uh, never, never. I think... But you're not using VS Code? No. VS Code can, huh? I think so. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so you all will have a folder called web dev intro, uh, web dev dash intro dev, dev master. Unzip it and open that folder in VS Code. So, can my. Where is Jinji? She's doing the Oh, okay, uh, but you. Yeah, I can help them. Yeah, like, got, we help them open it in VS Code. Oh. Is the, if the link is in the setup, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh. So, so, um, so, have you, you downloaded the, the folder, you downloaded the file, right? Yeah. Uh, where is it? Which file? What, the zip file that you downloaded. Actually, I'm not able to see which file. Oh, okay. Uh, hold on. The second link. Sorry? Which link? The second link? Um, yeah. Okay, yes, I've... I see the rabbit photo means correct now. Yes. Because I don't have the admin right to my laptop. Oh, so um, some way I can bypass this because I'm trying to download this directly, but it doesn't allow me to. Are you allowed to install uh, applications on your computer at all? No, because I don't mm. have admin right. This is a work laptop. Sure. Like, I okay, oh. never mind. Uh, we can get around this. Yeah. How do you get around this? Bye. Yeah. <laughs> This was the backup plan for us when, if some, in case this kind of nonsense happens. Um, unfortunately, I have to sign up for account. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just anything. Just, could you uh, uh, sign up? Yeah. Sign up. So. So I'll just have to. Yeah. Okay. Your your instructions will be slightly different from everywhere else. So I'm just gonna hang around here. You yours okay? So you can open it. Ah, yeah. Okay. Open now. Where's okay. the web dash intro? Uh, 
Second link. Second link. Second link. Then you go to the green button and you download. I download. Second link. So you need. No, no, no. Type that one. Bitly. Yourself. Are you okay? Just. It's not here. It's the download, right? Yes. Ah, then. So you need. I go for this one. Download it. Yes. Select the folders. Okay, open. Uh, can you save it, please? Save it somewhere. Ah, this one. Yes. Ah, okay. Can oh, you mind? It's in the starter. Okay. Go yeah. here. The then here, download this. Oh, we download wrong. So... No okay. Uh, oh. I'll show in both. Uh, oh, okay, so... Oh, sorry, not, not this one. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. This is the first link. No, I need to uh, go to the second link. <laughs> Can I borrow your mouse? Okay. <laughs> download is in download. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's here. Huh? Where's your zip file? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to... Oh, we saw there was a zip file. It's in the download okay. folder. Okay. okay, so you have VS Code? So, uh, this should be extracted already. Which one? Now you go to VS Code. Uh, never mind. Yeah. Let's see. No, it's okay. No worries. Folder. Okay. Visual Studio then Code. You need to find the folder. Uh, so, download. 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 This. so, this is the code editor I was trying to say. So, oh, okay. so it's actually... Have you... So you, you, have you used Notepad before? Oh, yeah. ah, so this is like Notepad but it has additional <coughs> features. Oh, okay. ah, so it's kind of helpful because when we are trying to um, sort of write code, right? Because there's very specific um, commands that sometimes if you use something like Notepad, you can't really tell where you made the typo. But once this is installed, right, I can show you that you can yeah, they are, they are, they, see, see they are different colours and this will, if you happen to type something wrong right, the colour will go, like will change. So it's easier for you to spot. Spot, okay. okay. Uh, so actually this is optional but we find it very helpful when oh, we... Oh, just to rectify that, not normal, like a backend to, uh, to make it easier for you to spot error. So even our, like if, I do this for a living right, but if you tomorrow ask me to change to just notepad right, then my productivity will... Go down. Because I type things wrongly all the time. And so I will use this to help me to like, because, like for example, sometimes I will forget like or oh, color. Then I type with a U, oh, but I, I don't see it until like eh oh wait the colors wrong. Oh okay, I type wrong. So it's helpful in that way. Of course, I say like if you have very sharp eye, you don't also can, also can. But I don't have a sharp eye, so I, I like to use this. Maybe sound. initially I think it's useful, you know. Mm. Once we get used to that, then and when you do this more, then you realize that you you're used to this help. Oh, that you don't want to go back. You I, are you working as a web developer, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, Mama, how's life? Actually, oh, <laughs> I have learned this SG and my long back. What is the difference? Ah, the and yes, then, then you, you, this, this will make a lot more sense to you. Uh, HTML is based on HTML, oh, but okay. uh, it's, it's, it's less strict than HTML. Oh, so okay. so there are some things that you, you remember in uh, HTML that you had to like for example everything you had to close text. Yeah, open close uh, uh, HTML is looser, uh, not as strict. Uh, okay. But yeah. Uh, yes, okay, installed already. But now nobody is using HTML, right? I think it's more HTML is another type of markup language. HTML uh, is hypertext markup language. Uh, 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 SG I can't remember what it stands for, but it's also very similar in a way that you use it to format text. I think maybe ad academia, some research mm. niche they still use, maybe. But it, it has not, it's not, it's not, not popular not, at yeah, all. Popular. But sometimes this kind of thing, technology is a hit but and it's miss. it's similar, I think, because I checked HTML, so some of Yes, it's very space. similar, so maybe this will make more sense to you as I go on. For now, this is just tooling. Okay. Tooling and it's, it's, sometimes it's annoying, but... Was it at downloads? Uh? Where was the folder? Can you remember? Yeah, it's actually. at the download, right? Yeah. You save it in the download? Mm. Actually, I save one. Actually, I also don't know I save where. So I'm going to drag this in here. No, it didn't work. Open folder. Oh, why is it not here? Why, why is it not there? I'm confused. Downloads. Oh, I didn't unzip. Sorry. Extract. Oh. Ah, uh, okay. That's better. So I'm just gonna close. Wait, can I close this folder? Ah. Uh. 
So it is going to access your Yeah, much better. Okay, here. So you, if you look at this, it's kind of semi-familiar, no? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want Hima? How's everybody? Life is good, very good. Uh, okay, I, I, I think most people are set up, so I'm going to move on. Um, so most of you will have a sidebar containing all the files inside this web dev intro master folder. Um, there's one folder called images that has some random images that I downloaded off the internet. Um, you have an index.html file and you have a styles.css file. So the first thing we are going to look at is this is not a very good setup. <laughs> I'm sorry you have to see my back. But Yes. Some of them use the code anyway, I think. Yeah, they I know. know how to use code anyway. Yes, yes, I do. How do they uh, get them? Okay. Yours a bit more my fun, but um do you got GitHub account, yeah, it's right? Really linked. It but it's it's your account, right? Yeah. So I need you to do this. And uh, Oh, very small. <laughs> Let's see. Where's the coin? The downloads here? ones are here. So this uh, is. Ah, yeah. The the problem is cannot directly access. We need to fork it. Ah, uh, yeah. I fork it for her. Yeah. Uh, where is it? Oh no! New connection. Isn't there an upload thing? Go upload. Ah. I I I uh never tried the upload part before. So. And then this should be upload. Oh, how do you get that to happen? <laughs> I, 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 I used this before. I, I do replace Cloud9 ever since they got bought over by Amazon. Ma. Understand. Very annoyed, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Every year must change service. Eventually, this is going to get bought over, then I'll change another service next year. It's going to take it. a few minutes. Yeah, but the, they still maintain the old accounts. You can still they don't let you sign in new ones. You can't sign new ones. Yeah. They make you get an Amazon account. I think it's yeah, it done. <laughs> yes. Yes, go, go, go. Put it all online a bit slow. So, yours will look a bit different from everybody else in the sense that it's here instead of. But it's kind of similar. So, it will look like that? Yeah, so you will have the. You will have these ridiculous images that I added, and then you also have these. Is this the one? Yeah. Uh, this is the closet. So that's the file that yeah. you want me to look at. For you, it might be a little, a bit of lag because they have to like. Well, it's just a different color, right? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Okay. So it's the same thing. Hello, boss. Hello, boss. So glad you can join us. You can help me help the ladies troubleshoot their problems. <laughs> okay. Thank you, boss. <laughs> okay, so I think most of us can access this colorful page. Colorful page. The reason why we ask you to download VS Code or some other things is because color is important. I'll explain later. So this is how a basic, a very basic HTML page looks like. Because this, at the end of it, right, this is just text, right? It's just text with like funny punctuation on it and like, you know, open code, close code. But at the end of the day, it's text. And your browser by default can open text files. If you try to open a text file, your browser will just review a block of text, right? So all these texts are, again, like I mentioned earlier, ways to format your content. Now, a HTML document has different parts to it. And I will refer back to my slides for more reference. Go, 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 go. So this is the basic structure. What you all see in front of you is the basic structure of a HTML file. Uh, content is usually marked. Uh, we use the phrase mark up when, we, when, when the content is surrounded by text. So a tag, right, is 
uh, this normally brackets are round. I don't know what the scientific term for these angled brackets are, but I'm going to call them angled brackets because they look like the greater than, less than sign. So these are tags, and all the content between the tag is known as an HTML element. So something like this. So um, anatomy of an HTML element, for example, and there are many of these tags you can use. This example uses a tag called figure, but you notice figure has, is, is between these angle brackets, there's opening tag and then there's a closing tag. So the difference between opening tag and closing tag is there's the additional backslash, right? So that's what a tag is. Tags can have things called attributes. Attributes are like characteristics, right? And different tags, and there are, going to be, there are a lot of tags. We will not learn all of them. You just need to know that there are many different tags for many different purposes. And each of the tags will have attributes uh, that are relevant to them. For example, image tag, which we will, we will encounter later, right? They have a source attribute, because you need to tell your browser where the image is. There's also a, a ALT attribute, which is very, very useful because if the image doesn't load, you don't want to show a blank square thing and then an outline and an empty image. You can, if you put text here, then you can, it's descriptive. So this one says, British short hair kitten. So you can sort of like, even if the image doesn't load, you can sort of like, I can imagine that it's a picture of a kitten. So that's why it's very, very important to have this. Fig caption is another tag, yet another tag, which is like the caption. So anything I mentioned, anything between tags are known as content. Nesting is possible, which means that the image and the caption, right, they are nested within this other element called figure. So the figure is made up of an image and a caption. Fair enough. If you notice image, wait, no closing tag. That's because the image doesn't have content. It's known as a void element. And an image is the most common void element. Void element just means no content because the, the content, the, the, the meat of the image comes from where the file is. But it's not, the content of the image isn't actually in your code itself. So image, no need closing tag. Anything that has content will need closing tag. But some, like an image doesn't. So that's the difference. So this in real life will look like this. So, so like, yes, you have the figure. The, so the figure, it's, this is a figure, image and the caption. This is what will be rendered from that code. Yeah. The kitten asks, what on earth are you doing here on a Saturday afternoon? I also don't know. So the structure of HTML, HTML document, you will notice that there is, in, like there is indentation. The indentation, unlike a lot of other programming languages is optional, but it really helps to fi for you to figure out as a developer, right, where, like, what is nested inside what code. So this one is really for, it's like visual help. So the most, outermost will always be a HTML tag, because you want to tell the browser that this is a, this is a HTML file, right? The next level in, you have something called a head and a body. And I like, I like HTML because it's kind of uh, it's kind of like English. Your document has a head, and your document has a body. So head on top, body below. So it's very human, right? So, ah, what happened? So like I said, uh, elements can have different attributes. So the, this is an opening. If you all refer to the index.html file you downloaded, the top always says, doc type html this is sort of like a it's like meta information that you tell the you, you will tell the browser that okay this is a this is the type of document it's an identifier that you always include most people will never ever write this by hand because usually when we start a new project right is it starts off with a pre pre pre-made file empty file but it's pre-written with all the all this but if you do ever decide one day like i I'm very free today. I'm going to write my whole HTML from the top. Then you have to write this first, first line. So HTML element like I mentioned is the, the first, the, the biggest, the root element. And there's a lot of attributes, but I want to emphasize this one particular attribute. If you move forward, you create your own website, right? No matter, no matter what you do, please remember to include a language attribute. The language attribute only applies, 
can be used in other tags as well, but it's important to include it in the HTML, the, the root element, because how many people use Google Chrome as your browser? Okay, most, most of you, some of you don't. If you access a, a website that is not in your default language, do you realize that some, Chrome will ask you, this, uh, this website appears to be in Russian. Do you want to translate Russian? Like, but have you ever wonder how come, how come Google knows this is a Russian website? Like, what's going on? That's because that site probably had included lang, L-A-N-G equals R-U. So browsers utilize this information uh, to, to sort of for user experience purposes and indexing and whatever, but uh, Google Chrome actually utilizes this to, because Google Translate is Google's own service, so they can do that. Uh, Firefox probably doesn't. I think if you use Microsoft Edge, maybe they'll ask you to use Bing Translate. I'm not too sure. But they utilize this so they can enhance the experience. That's what Google is doing. And it's all because of this language identifier. Um, I don't think any of you, I may be wrong, but any of you have ever used screen readers before. But screen readers have a number of pre, is uh, like, let, let's put it accents uh, in that sense. And they do, they do try to, for example, if you do like FR, they'll try to use a French speaker's accent. So you don't do this properly. Sometimes the, they, they will try to pronounce the word, like a French word using like English pronunciation. It just sounds not, like just sounds wrong. So, so this language attribute is also important for like accessibility reasons. So th this is a relative, that's why I choose to emphasize this particular attribute, but a lot of texts have a lot of attributes also. So the head element, again, is the top of your HTML document. This, the, there are a lot of texts that you can put in here, but they are usually metadata, which means they tell, they contain information about your website, but not necessarily information that is visible. The only two most, the most two most important tags that must, you must, must, must include inside your head element, right, is title, which you all have. So on, on, the, on the index HTML, you have title and uh, there's a meta name description. Why is it so important? Because when you search for something on Google or on any other search engine, you'll get a list of results. Now this list of results has a title and then it's short blurb. The title that they show, right, is what, they, what, the, what Google can read off your title element. So if you, your site has no title, Google cannot find. Google will not show. So the New Age philosophical question is, if you have a website and Google cannot find it, does it really exist? Think about it. So title very important. Right now, I think the, the one that you have says something very, very generic, like, I don't know, template or something, right? So, what I want you all to do now is whatever browser you are using, right, can you try and open the file? So if you are using, mine is a Mac, ah, so sorry, the, the example is for Macs first, but the concept is the same. Can you all open this file, right, with a browser? So open it with Chrome or Firefox or whatever you, you prefer. Mm -hmm. Can any browser? Uh, no, I have to go and rescue the code anyway, lady. Hold on, everybody, just try over the file. Uh, if it's correct, it should be this weird shade of green. <coughs> it's blank, but it's green. Uh, if I never remember wrong, if you press click. Let me test something just to confirm. Uh. Dinosaur. Save. Okay, when you save, it will spin so you know it's saving, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like live. Oh. So if you uh, now got dinosaur, just now don't have dinosaur, so don't want dinosaur. So every time you do something and then you save, huh? uh, so you're, the, the, actually it's similar to what they, as in they refresh browser, you also refresh, it's the, it's the uh, same so effect. So this just translates to yeah, this yeah, yeah. one. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So if everybody has seen, seen this funny green screen, please look at the very top. 
it says HTML5 template at the very top. That is where your title element shows up. So please don't keep it as HTML template. Please change it to something else. Uh, I'm going to change it to, I don't know, dinosaurs are cool. If you save it, and one thing to remember throughout the course of today is every time you make a change to your file, if you want to see it reflected, you must save. The most common error, and I still do it to this day, is I do, 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 do that and never save. Then I refresh my browser for five minutes, cannot understand why my change never showed up because I never saved my file. So please remember to save your file. The shortcut for saving file using just the keyboard on a Mac is Command S. If you're using Windows, you can use Control S. But if you feel that your fingers need to exercise, then you can also go up to date. So file, save, also can, same thing, just save it. So after you save it, dinosaurs are cool, refresh, you should see that this changes. So please change it to something other than HTML template because HTML template is a terrible name. Why rabbits? The next thing that is pretty important is the second line here, meta name description, content blank HTML template. This is, the, this is what shows up in the blurb when you do a Google search. So most sites, uh, most, most sites will have this written up properly because you know they have a marketing department, Google search very important. Sometimes personal sites, sometimes you leave it blank then you end up not seeing anything. Sometimes even worse is that you, if you downloaded a template from somewhere and then they put some nonsense here like, oh, free admin team from Bootstrap, whatever, then your website could be like really nice and everything, but when people Google search it, they see, oh, free admin Bootstrap team. So please also modify this. Don't leave it as blank HTML template. Just change it to anything. Today, there's, it's not strict that everybody is going to show up with create the same web page. Um, so, you are probably more creative than me. I'm not very creative. So um, what the files I've included is if you lazy, don't want to go and find your own image, you can use the images here. But there's nothing stopping you from using your own images, just FYI. Content also, any howly thing or something, like don't, don't need to follow my nonsense. Because my, 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 my content is going to be nonsense from now until 6 o'clock, just saying. Um, this, but when you, when you update this, right, you won't be able to see. This is only used by search indexes, uh, search engine indexes, but you still should change it. Uh, so I just put something rubbish there. So that's for the head. All these other things are, are, are important, but if you don't include them, right, your website doesn't break. The one thing that I want to... Uh, so meta, just in, in indicating uh, information about the site, title is fine. There's this particular tag called link. What link does is it allows, your, it allows the browser to understand that if, even though the, the browser is only reading the HTML file, it will allow it to know that you are linking another file. There are, there's resources in other files. It could be CSS files. It could be JavaScript files. But you use a link to tell the browser that, hey, this, uh, there's more information in these other files that my HTML needs to, to, to render things correctly. So this is already pre-populated that in your folder, you have one more file called style CSS. So this, this line here, right, it allows the browser, it lets the browser know that the style CSS file is also relevant and will help render your, your web page correctly using link. Like I said, usually you probably will not be typing this out by hand because you download a template and start an empty template that has all this to start with. But it's good to know what it does. Go back. Anything inside the body element is what will show up. So 
if you type anything in the body element right now just type anything type dinosaur type kitten type any howly and you save and you refresh you will see that text on the green website so like but it must be between the body text so between the opening and the closing tag just type type something type dinosaurs might eat rabbits save save and refresh it should show up on your web page just to double check that all is well that's 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 what happens so you realize that anything you type on top doesn't come up anything inside body will come up so that's that's how it works that's how the tags work by right there should be only one body element on your web page but the thing about html and web development is that html is something that is very forgiving if you type something wrong right in contrast to a lot of other programming languages in other programming languages if you come if you type something wrong right you will get a huge error the project will say the the the, the program will say no wrong and it will just stop error out HTML will be different, it's, it's, very, it's very forgiving. It will like attempt to, I think this is what this person is trying to do, and you'll still try to render, but you'll just render it wrongly. Because to render it correctly, the tags are important. But if you do something wrong, right, it will still render, but usually it will end up not looking the way you expected. That's why you should strive to get your tags right, even though you could get it wrong, it will not break, but it will look wrong. So there should be only one body element. You can have a lot of other tags, but body element, you should only have one. So uh, like I mentioned, got a lot of tags, a lot, a lot of tags. A lot of tags you can use. Um, we won't be covering all of them, just good to know that there are a lot of different types of tags. There are tags for headers. I know it's very small, huh? sorry. There are tags for headers. There are tags for lists. There are tags for tables, for caption, for quotes, for all kinds of funny things. So Google is your friend. If you are going to create a website and, and you say you wanna create you you wanna create a like like what I did just now, like a caption, an image with a caption below it. You can always do it with uh, just put the image and then just put like paragraph P text below. But there's a, there's, there's a figure element that you can use for it. And this helps because it helps in terms of uh, something called semantics. So it sort of lets, lets the, the browser, lets machines, lets devices like screen readers better understand the structure of your content. That's the point of why we have so many, is to give your content structure. It's like the... the if you imagine your website is a, is a person, this HTML is the skeleton. So you could just throw everything on, in everything use P tag, then it will just be a block. Your website has no backbone. Uh, so we must sort of do this whole semantics thing. So, but don't worry about this, don't worry about this. It's a lot and no, nobody memorizes this, trust me. Okay, maybe some people, like a few people do, but nobody knows all of this because we just Google if we have to or we use it so often that we kind of know what to use. So this is what we have, basic template. Uh, one thing to understand is that whatever we do today, right, by default things, just imagine every single element that you write today. All of them are boxes. The web, page, web, the web is just boxes, lots of boxes stacked in all sorts of nonsense directions, but boxes. And these boxes, by default, they will be rendered top to bottom, left to right. So the order in which you write your things, right, they'll appear on the web, is top to bottom, sometimes, but the order is like that. So left to right, then go down, left to right, left to right, left to right. And it will correspond to the, the order in which you write your, write your code. Right. Uh, okay, never mind. Let's not talk about this yet. Let's talk about basic structure. So, back to this. 
basic structure, let's start off with a H1 tag. I think if you use Visual Studio Code, you should also have this. If you type right, this H1 in, the, in these angle brackets, right? When you angle bracket and you backslash, it should autocomplete. I think. That's right, yeah. So this, that's why we ask you to install save time. So whatever your website is, um, the topmost level header should be your title. It's, uh, it's, it's structure, right? So obviously, that, that you can tell that I have, I have a team going on here today. So my team is Revit, so you can do anything else. You can make it a personal website if you want. H1. So, OK, that's your first tag. Next tag we want, I want to talk about is P. P stands for paragraph. So what we want to put in a paragraph tag uh, should, could be anything. So this is a very basic website. Um, if you have some other ideas on how you want a website to look, go ahead. But I'm just introducing the different tags you, you can use today. So paragraph, uh, it will look different. Uh, not very creative. I'm going to Google Rabbit so I can steal other people's content. If you can think of content on your own, please carry on. So by now you should have like a header and then you can you have some text. If you have more to say, we there are six different levels of headers you can use. And in terms of visual hierarchy, right, we would you would want to have your headers correspond to the structure of your content. So you have like the topmost header for my for my, my example, okay, the title of my web page is rare bits. So I use H1. But perhaps I'm going to have a few sections in between. I will like, OK, um, introduction to Rabbit, that's one. But next one, OK, different breeds of Rabbit. La, um, like, uh, I don't know, uh, where Rabbits, origin of Rabbits, or this kind of thing. It could be, then you use, uh, it's the second level of content down. So you use a H2. Like inside origins of Rabbits, maybe you have a few more divisions. Then you use H3. So you, you try to keep a hierarchy. Because by rights, this um, header text the, the size differently. The H1 will be biggest, then the size will get smaller as you go down to H6. So again, it's, it's, it's more of a formatting issue. It's a visual hierarchy of your content to allow it to be easier, more easily consumed by your readers or your users. So the next thing most people want on their website in this day and age is you want to have image. So the next tag I'm going to introduce right, is the image tag. Now I mentioned that image tag is a bit different because image tag does not contain content. How image tags work is that you need to tell the you need to give it a source attribute, attribute A T T R. This source attribute, okay, source uh, source is spelled S R C. It's not S C R. It's not S O U R C E. It's spelled S R C because like I said, computer's not very smart. You have to use the correct attribute. So this source attribute, right, is used to tell the browser where to find the image file. So for this particular project, I have added this folder called images. Um, for ease, for every, like, just to make things easier for everybody, and if you want to use an image from your own computer, image of uh, your, your own cat, maybe, uh, copy it into this folder so that it makes it easier to follow my example. But if you are actually very familiar with file systems and you can, uh, you can link to the, you know the exact file path of your image, also can, also can, not stopping you. For ease, for every, like just, just for convenience sake, just throw all your images into the images folder. And then you can reference the images by typing, so folder and then the file name. File name, you must include the extension. So your PNG, uh, GIF, uh, J JPG must include. Cannot just put the file name. So obviously, I'm going for Rabbit. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I think if you're using uh, VS Code, uh, they will do the codes. The op if you type a code, they, it will it come in a pair for you. But just make sure that your this uh, this link to your image is within quotes. Can be double or single, but make sure that is you open with double, then you close with double. If you open with single, close with single, just standardize. I think if you type it wrongly, it, the color will change. So you can try and just error it if you want to. The next attribute like I mentioned is very important, is the is the alt attribute. And again, I just want to really focus on the syntax. Attributes is the attribute name and then equal sign. Make sure there are no spaces in between. Because sometimes used to typing, we are by default, we will press space bar. Sometimes I do that. But make sure that between your attribute and uh, whatever is inside this line, no spaces, is a attribute src equals then quotes, and then your file name. Just, just an emphasis uh, to check. Alt text, is, like I said, alt text must be a description of what the image is. Because the alt text only kicks in when the image doesn't load. Sometimes internet no good. So, um, this, this, this example actually works better when I was in Penang because that day the internet really no good. But in Singapore, generally internet quite nice, like quite, quite strong, so usually the image will load. But sometimes the image don't load. Image, and I think most of us would have experienced this before. The image don't load, right? It, it's, uh, I think if you are on a Windows machine, it's this rectangle and then a blank thing. Some, sometimes there is text. So the, the browser will read the text from this alt attribute. So if you don't include the alt attribute, right, it, and the image doesn't look it's blank, right, it's actually a very, it's, it's not a good fallback. So for images, always use a phrase that describes what the image would be. So please don't do this, huh? No, not this. I know it's an image and I know it didn't load. That's not helpful. So I could say, like, a um, baby rabbit. So like, OK, I can image didn't load, but I can imagine that I saw a baby rabbit. So that's kind of that's the reason behind why you have it. So if you notice, right, just look at the, the, the color of body, right? If I didn't close it, right, body is a wrong color. But once I, once I close it, right, ugh. So this is, again, all this color changing and these different colors is something we call syntax highlighting. It's really purely a helper feature. Helper feature because people like me cannot type properly. Never learn in school, always type wrongly. So this, this actually is helpful for, for people like me who always type things wrongly. I can spot my typos more easily than if I hadn't. So if you do this, if you had used my image, you save and when you reload, you'll be very disturbed. Because on purpose, I made the image huge. And then everybody will start reading and like, can I make the image smaller? Like, yes, yes, you can make the image smaller. That's why I made your download such a big image, so that we can learn how to make the image smaller. So if you use your, your own image and it wasn't so big, it probably look better. But if all went well, you should have been able to load an image. Can anybody not load image, image not loading? OK. Yes, please. What happened? So I referenced. Oh, I think I know that's the issue. Mm. Was that my image? I don't know. I, I referenced this one. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just yes, want yes. to put uh, JPG. Oh, OK. JPG. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So. That's that. Everything is working. Excellent. So the, the size of the image, right, is considered a style. It's a, it, it affects how your, your image looks. It affects things that affect how your content looks will be controlled in CSS, which we'll talk about soon. But for now, what we want to do is we want to get the content of our website up first. So text and image. So another very commonly used tag when we do 
uh, websites with, which are informational, like my Revit website here, is that we would like to structure uh, content into lists. So what we have, right, I like to, for beginners, I enjoy using Microsoft Word as a reference. Has anybody not used Microsoft Word before? Please tell me now. Then I will change my example. But I always operate on the assumption that everybody has used Microsoft Word at least once in your life or any other text editor. So when we type in a text editor, we also try to format our text. Then sometimes we have lists. There are two icons. You have the one with the numbers and the one with the bullets. So HTML also have the one with the numbers and the one with the bullets. It's just you express it in code. So there are two types. The first one is the one without the numbers. It's called UL. It's called UL for a reason, because UL stands for unordered list. Ah. So like I said, the people who wrote this HTML, that guy that I mentioned earlier, Sir Tim Berners-Lee, from England, speak English, unordered list, UL. So inside your UL, you will have list items. And these list items use the tag LI, because lists start with LI. So use LI. LI, not LISTS. So just LI. So what happens is that each of these LI will be an item in your list. There are list items inside. So this is a. If you use LI alone, you will not get the bullet points. Because this is the type of HTML element that comes as a set. Your list items must live inside an unordered list. So they are nested inside. So hold on while I steal more content from the internet. Seventeen things no one tells you before you get a rabbit. That sounds nice. Are you so cute? Okay, so like <coughs> I'm obviously not taking this content creation very seriously, so I have a bunch of ridiculous sentences inside my list. I'm sure you're um, much more serious at this than me, but if all went well, you should get something like this bulleted content. Yes. No number? Or ah. Number. So you get bullets. Does anybody's bullets not show up? Good, great. So if I want to have numbers, we will use something else called OL, which stands for ordered list. But if you are going to change whatever you have existing, when you change the top, remember to change the closing tag also. So if you change to OL and you save your bullets, become a uh, stupid image. Your bullets should become numbers. If your bullets not never become numbers, go and check your closing tag. Yeah. So that is So now today we've up till now, right? It's now 2.30. We have covered a header or headers if you have more content. Covered image, covered list. Let's cover one more, which is quite often we almost see all the time is called links. Unfortunately, links, right? The, the tag we use is not link. Uh, don't know why, but the tag name is actually A. A is for links. 
Um, I really should go and research why it's called A. Uh, I will put this as a reminder to myself. The next time you see me, you can ask, and I probably will have figured it out. But for links, right? Links are interesting because links have content, and they also need to tell the browser where to go next. So this is the type of tag that will have content. That's why it has a closing tag, but it will also have attributes. The attribute to tell the browser where to link to when you click the link, right, is something called href. href. Again, I did not research why it's called href. I think I'm thinking ref is reference. I used to pronounce it ref, but then somebody told me no, 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 it's href. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay, href. Can. So anyway, uh, wherever you want to link to, I like um, find out more information. About rabbits, then I will link to Wikipedia. So if you notice, I'm linking to an external page. I'm linking to Wikipedia. Wikipedia does not exist on my computer, so I must include the full address. Because there are two different types of links. There's something we call absolute links and something we call relative links. Uh, absolute, so links, these links are like addresses, right? You think your own address, your actual physical location address. Uh, absolute link means that you go your block number, then your unit number, then your street name, then your postal code, then your country. If you live in Malaysia, we have states, then country. So for me, like, oh, okay, I got my street na my, 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 my door number, then my street name, then my like Johor Bahru, okay. Oh, so first I got my neighborhood, Taman Sentosa, then my this uh, state, then, then town, Johor Bahru, then I got state, Johor, then I got country, Malaysia. If you are irritating, you can just put earth, and the postman also don't care. But that's the absolute, that means the full path. A relative link is, the, what the browser will do with relative links is that if you don't include so if you look at the image, right, I didn't include all the extra stuff in front. And by doing that, right, what the browser will assume, they assume that they are, you, all these links are relative to where the index.html file is. Relative meaning when it says images slash, this means a folder, right? It will automatically assume that the image folder is in the same, same location as your index.html file. So if, for example, you are referencing, uh, you, you have more folders, you have an like, image inside, you got a bit more, a few more folders, right? You just add, add the folder. But by default, a relative link assumes that the starting point is the index.html file. And then it will try to look. Uh, so if you try to reference anything that is outside, right? The browser won't know unless you tell it. It will, so let's say, for example, like, I have a folder called bananas outside, a, like one level out of my index.html file. If I just put banana slash, it won't show up. Cause browser, cause inside here, right, there's no banana. So browser will just assume, oh, you probably type it wrongly. Don't care. So if you want to access anything that's external to index.html file, you need an absolute URL. So an absolute URL in my case, I'm using Wikipedia must have the HTTPS. So if you want to include external image from somewhere else, not your computer, just somewhere on the internet, right? Must include the full or oh, HTTPS, www.unicorn.com slash unicorn with wings dot jpg. Then you can access an external file. There's, actually, that's why for like ease, I ask you all to put all your local all images, just download and throw in this folder to make life easier. That's the, that's the reason. Can. Uh, okay, okay. Somebody said, let's put video. Okay, so let's try putting video. So, there is a tag for video also. So let me go and find a video. Do I have... <laughs> no, YouTube is... Yeah, uh, I got idea one, wait. Your video. Actually, I got I got video on my local. 
if you all have video on your local machine, this will make, uh, make it easier. Uh, because I think most default, the, the default idea is like go YouTube. Uh, when you embed a link from YouTube, I think this is, this is good to show also. YouTube doesn't give you the video file directly because YouTube is built by engineers. And engineers just like to make life difficult for everyone. No, I'm joking. Um, but what YouTube does is that when you click on share, right, and you click embed, right, there's a different tag. It's called iframe. iframe is another type of HTML tag. I think you all realize that there are a lot of different type of HTML tags. iframe, again, this is English, huh? frame. Huh? So frame just means that the video, it's actually re it's, 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 it's sort of rendering the video off of YouTube onto your website. So if you want to include a video that is hosted on somebody else's service, almost all of the time, they will provide this embed link. Almost all the time, they will utilize this iframe tag. So, What's easy for us, it makes life easy for us because what we can do, we can just copy, right? And you can just put it in your code like that. And it will work. It will work. So iframe also got its own uh, attributes. I think we are reasonably familiar with attributes now. So you can also dictate the width of the video that you want to embed from YouTube. Uh, the height, where the... You so this is already formatted for you off of YouTube. But I mean, there are some things you can change. Ma. You can change the width and the height of the frame if you want to. Um, frame border, extra attributes that, that YouTube have included. But generally, most people can do the, the default. This is for, let's say, YouTube. But let's say, you have a, let's say you have a video locally on your own machine. Like, I, I have videos on my local machine. Let me find one. La la la. La, la 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 Oh, I cannot see, see huh? I'm getting old. Oh, 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 oh. oh hey, 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 where's your Okay, I have a video called Diagonal Scroll. To make life easier for myself, I'm going to put it into this folder. So if you, if you make changes to the folder, it should show up on your text editor also. So that's kind of nice, a nice feature to have. So I have a, a folder called video now. So this, this video name is called uh, Diagonal Scroll. I'm really, really sorry about this tiny text situation that's happening here. Um, but OK. Get rid of this. There's a tag called video. And to be honest, I cannot remember how the video tag is supposed to look. So I'm going to Google. And you will realize that even people who have been doing this for some time will almost always Google stuff. Because everybody's brain has limited capacity. Uh, I need to remember to like meetings. I need to remember when my mother's birthday is. I need to remember a lot of important things. Uh, so don't need to remember all this when it's Googleable. But the resource I, I always try to recommend is this thing called MDN. Uh, MDN is a resource for web developer. It covers a lot of things. Um, even though it says Mozilla at the moment, it's actually worked on amongst all the major uh, browser vendors. So um, Mozilla, Google, Microsoft all are coming together to work on MD, and they may or may not rename it eventually, but this is like the reference. If you are going to do web moving forward, 
and you are confused about HTML stuff, CSS stuff, JavaScript stuff, this is a very, very solid reference because all the browser vendors help contribute to this reference. Think of it like a web encyclopedia. MDN, web docs, Google, MDN. So anyways, MDN. And Malaysia, Denmark, Norway. Um, so okay, the video element. So this is how the video, okay, let me try and zoom. zoom, 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 zoom. So like I mentioned, right, all different elements will have uh, attributes that are only relevant to themselves. So like a video uh, element will have attributes like controls, uh, muted. So controls and muted, right, you think about it, if it's an image, eh, not relevant. That's why these attributes, if you try to use an image tag, don't do anything. Browser knows to ignore. It won't break your, it won't break your code. The browser just ignores it because they're like, eh, no time for this person doesn't know HTML. But if it's a video, things like this attribute like controls, what it does is that you can trigger, you can, you can control whether the, the video right, has this uh, play or pause. If you, don't, if you don't want it, right, then you can also choose for the video not to have controls. You can, you can uh, sort of manipulate how your video renders based on these attributes. So if you want to do a video, right? A video can have content inside. So if you see in this particular example, right? It has a closing tag because it's not, it's not like an image. Um, image don't need closing tag. Why, why would you have a closing tag? It's because video doesn't have an alt attribute. So if your browser doesn't support video, because older browsers, uh, I, I would think most of you are using Chrome, so Chrome auto updates itself. So your version of Chrome quite new. Uh, if you use like older browsers, maybe you work in a bank, and then your bank is Malaysian, and the Malaysian bank doesn't want to upgrade. Everybody has to use a Windows XP computer. Uh, and then you have an old browser, doesn't support video. What happened? You will not be able to see any video. It will just display, sorry, your browser doesn't support embedded video. You can customize this. You can say, I'm sorry, your employer doesn't want to upgrade technology. Can, you can do that. Because this part can customize. And this is content that will exist between the text. So if, let's say I want to include a video. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to include the source. If you don't have a video, you can just ignore me and just watch me do this. Diagonal. Sorry, you want to copy and paste what? Oh no, because you, you need to have a video file on your on your on your computer. I uh if you if you have then go ahead and try this. If not, uh never mind. I'm just doing this for fun. Mm, yeah, okay. My my confirm can so I'm just gonna. So the, at, at its base, right? You will see this video. So right now, I did not include anything. I just included source. So as you can see, right, no controls. Cannot do anything. So controls are helpful because I want to control if I uh, can play or pause my video. So now I got controls. The fun part about these HTML elements is that I am currently using Firefox. My controls look like this. I think if you are using Chrome, your controls may look different. If you are using Edge, your controls again may look different because the browsers themselves style this. Um, some, some of these uh, elements, in uh, if you use audio, they also have this like play, this time, these kind of full screen things. Uh, browsers will default style for you. So if you're using Firefox, you're using Chrome, you're using Edge, it may or may not look different. So you can play. So this particular website was built by this gentleman standing at the back, Mr. Lim. Uh, Mr. Lim is also a coach. And Mr. Lim created this website called Super City Hackathon. And I just made a video of it. So this is how videos work. But again, not related to rabbits, so I'm just going to get rid of it. This is a FYI. One more thing before we go for a break, because uh, I mean, I think you're also very tired of me talking. If I, I put this A around a sentence, the whole link, right? The 
the whole sentence is a link, which is fine, which is fine. But sometimes we, we don't want the whole sentence to be a link. We want it to be like around a few words only. So maybe like I say, okay, um, I just want it like a, around rabbits, for example. So what you do is that the tag just goes around the, the word that you want. But the, the sentence itself is a, in, a, in a tag. So later I will explain a bit further about this sort of elements within elements or how elements are rendered. So this is, uh, if you need to change a link, you can follow this. And uh, let's have a break now. So if you are stuck, you can kind of ask questions, go toilet, go toilet, drink water, drink water, and we reconvene in 15 minutes. Yes, thank you. Please.